Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So today we want to take a look at passive equalizers. We have an amazing passive equalizer available inside of Studio One and compare that with the Pro EQ, the active equalizer that you're probably already familiar with. The Passive EQ is a module inside of the Fat Channel XT. The Fat Channel XT is a plugin that's available inside of your Studio One browser. You just navigate to your Studio One effects and you can drag and drop it from there onto any channel of your choice in classic Studio One fashion. Now, when we then switch to the Equalizer module section and click here, you can select the Passive EQ, which is an amazing emulation of one of the most famous analog Passive EQs in the world. Passive EQs have quite a rich history in the audio industry, dating back all the way into the mid 20th century. And they work fundamentally different to the actively powered equalizers because passive equalizers don't use any powered components such as transistors or tubes. Instead, they use only passive electronic components and have an amplifier stage after that. This means that in certain situations, passive EQs have some inherent advantages, but they can also be the wrong choice in other situations. And that's something that I want to help you understand today. So to kick things off, I want to take a look at this synth pad in my song. And I have the fat channel still inserted on my master here with the active EQ, the pro EQ after for an AB comparison. Let's go to the fat channel first, activate it and take a look at the overall controls that we see here. So we have a low frequency dial and we have a high frequency dial. The way this works is you select your low or high frequency. Keep in mind that this is a very broad range. So if you select 100 here, you're affecting your song all the way into the low mid range and beyond actually. And same goes for the high frequency band. This is also depending on the bandwidth that you set here. The more it is set towards 10, the broader the bandwidth is and the more frequencies are affected. And then you can boost and attenuate actually at the same time. You can create some really nice effects with that. Uh, for example, boost certain low end without uh, making it get out of control by setting the attenuation accordingly. And you really dial these in by ear. Hearing is believing when it comes to passive EQs. Don't try to understand them on a theoretical level. Just dial in and also enjoy how forgiving they are as you're dialing in. You'll find that even when we boost like the high frequencies with six decibels, that still sounds fairly musical. I mean, it's a nice coloring that happens, but we're not ruining the mix by any stretch of the imagination. On the other hand, if we try the exact same thing on the Pro EQ, let's just activate the mid frequency band here and set that to three kilohertz and boost six decibels here. Let's see what that sounds like. Right, that is much more obvious. and could potentially be making the entire thing just too sharp in the upper mids. So you can see if we're looking for broader strokes, if we try to add more definition overall to an instrument, the mix or the master, then the passive EQ is an amazing choice. But if we had like a certain PK frequency, for instance, that we need to control with precision, then the passive EQ would not be good because it wouldn't allow us the same kind of control over a very specific frequency as the surgical Pro EQ does. This is especially true for the dynamic mode of Pro EQ, which is amazing to fix these kind of very specific problems in very specific frequency ranges in your mix. And if you want to learn more about that functionality of Pro EQ, I have a video about that also. I'm linking that right here. So to summarize, both the Pro EQ as well as Passive EQ have their individual applications in Studio One. The Pro EQ is an amazing and indispensable tool, particularly when cutting frequencies, when you do your low cuts, your high cuts, when you tame certain resonances, do that with the Pro EQ. But if you're trying to just increase the overall musicality, the tone and color of your mix, if you're looking for some final definition and you're working in broad strokes, you're boosting wider ranges of frequencies, then go for the passive EQ can be an amazing tool and very hard to dial that in wrong. Thank you for watching.